Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're continuing to dive into the buttons and switches on the overhead panel. The A320 has hundreds of different buttons and switches, and we'll be tackling each of them section by section. Today, we'll be tackling the bottom section of the overhead panel, which contains the lights, signs, and APU panels. First up is the exterior lighting panel. The strobe switch is used to turn on and off the high-powered white flashing strobes. There is one on each wingtip and one below the tail cone. The strobes are normally switched on when entering an active runway, either for takeoff or for crossing one runway to get to another. They should be kept on whilst airborne. In the off position, the strobes are always off. A strobe light off ECAM memo is displayed in green if the strobe switch is left off in flight. When the switch is in the auto position, the strobes remain off whilst on the ground and then automatically turn on when the main gear strut is not compressed, i.e. when in flight. When the switch is set to on, the strobe's lights flash continuously both on the ground and in the air. On newer aircraft, a blue LED light below each strobe light flashes if the strobe light is coming to the end of its life and requires replacing. Next is the beacon. This switch controls the two flashing red lights, one on top and one on the bottom of the fuselage. This signals the ground crew and other aircraft that the engines are about to start or still running. This is a simple on and off switch. The wing switch controls two beam lights on each side of the fuselage. These lights provide lighting on the wing leading edge and on the engine air intake to detect ice accretion. This is a simple on and off switch. This switch controls both the navigation and logo lights. The navigation lights are situated on each wing tip and in the APU tail cone. The logo lights are installed in the upper surface of each horizontal stabilizer to illuminate the company logo on the vertical stabilizer, provided the main gear struts are compressed or the flaps slats are extended. This switch is normally turned on during the preliminary cockpit preparation and especially before the exterior walk around to check their serviceability. When in the off position, all of the navigation and logo lights are off. In position one, the logo lights and the first set of navigation lights are turned on. In position two, the logo lights and the second set of navigation lights are turned on. Position two is normally used when some of the position one lights are unserviceable. The runway turn off switch controls two lights situated on the nose landing gear assembly. They are angled at 45 degrees. Some airlines use this when entering a runway, while some airline SOPs mandate it for taxi. Check your company manuals for your operating procedures. These lights will also turn off automatically when landing gear is retracted. The two landing light switches allow you to operate the right and left landing lights independently. They are situated on the underwing surface. The LDG LT ECAM memo is displayed in green if one landing light is extended. Some airline SOPs only allow these to be extended below 250 knots. This is because they protrude outwards from the wing and act as a small secondary drag device for the aircraft. They are normally retracted after slat retraction on departure and extended at landing gear extension on approach. However, these are regularly utilized below 10,000 feet for both departure and approach. When in the retracted position, they are switched off and stowed. In the off position, they are switched off but are in the extended position. When selected on, they are both switched on and extended. The nose switch controls the taxi and takeoff lights. These two lights are attached to the nose gear strut and turn off automatically when the landing gear is retracted. As the name suggests, the taxi light is used for taxiing and the takeoff lights are used when cleared for takeoff. In the off position, both lights are off. In the taxi position, the taxi light turns on. In the takeoff position, both the taxi and takeoff lights are turned on. The APU master switch controls the APU operation and its starting and shutdown sequences. When in its off lights out condition, the APU is off or APU is in its manual shutdown sequence. 
when the switch is on, the APU is running, or in its starting sequence. When the master switch shows an amber fault light, an automatic shutdown of the APU has occurred. This can be due to many reasons. The APU start switch initiates the starting sequence of the APU. When in its off lights out condition, the APU is off. When pressed, the push button initially lights up its on light. This means the APU start sequence is in progress. The exact start sequence will be detailed in another video. Two seconds after the N% percent reaches 95%, or when the N% percent is above 99.5%, the on light extinguishes and the green available light illuminates. The APU available ECAM memo also appears in this case to signify that the APU is available for use and can supply bleed air and electrical power to the aircraft systems. Next up is the signs panel. The seatbelt switch controls the fastened seatbelt and return to seat signs in the cabin. A low tone chime is also played when the switch is moved either way. When the seatbelt switch is on, the seatbelt's ECAM memo is displayed. This is a simple on and off switch. The switch next to the seatbelts can be one of three switch variants, which are one, no smoking, two, exit, and three, no portable electrical devices. The no smoking switch is most commonly found, so we will focus on that. It has three positions. In the off position, the exit and no smoking signs are turned off in the cabin. In the auto position, the exit and no smoking signs are turned on in the cabin when either the landing gear is extended or the flaps or slats are extended. When in the on position, the exit and no smoking signs are always illuminated. For aircraft in the non-smoker configuration, the no smoking signs are always on. The no smoking ECAM memo is displayed whenever the signs are on. If the cabin altitude goes above 11,300 feet, plus or minus 350 feet, the cabin lights and all of the cabin signs, except for the no portable electrical devices sign, turn on regardless of switch position. Lastly, the emergency exit lighting switch. This controls the floor proximity marking system, the exit signs, and the overhead emergency lights. When the switch is in the on position, all of the above lighting illuminates. In the off position, all of the lights are off, and the amber off sign illuminates next to the switch. Leaving the switch in the off position when the aircraft is shut down allows certain components of the emergency lighting system to charge. When in the arm position, certain components illuminate in certain scenarios. If the normal aircraft electrical power system fails or the DC essential shed bus fails, all three of the emergency exit lighting components will illuminate. In the case of an AC bus one fault or is unpowered, the overhead emergency lighting will illuminate. It is now powered by the DC essential shed bus. If this then subsequently fails, then dedicated battery packs will power this lighting for approximately 12 minutes. Finally, we move on to the internal lighting panel. The overhead integral lighting knob turns the overhead panel's integral lighting on and off and adjusts its brightness. The ice indicator and standby compass switch turns the standby compass light and the external visual ice indicator light on and off. The dome switch controls both dome lights in the flight deck on the overhead panel above the circuit breakers with dim and bright light settings. The annunciator light switch controls all the flight deck annunciator lights. In the test position, all flight deck annunciator lights turn on, including the LCDs on the FCU. In the dim position, the brightness of all flight deck annunciator lights is reduced. In the bright position, the brightness of all flight deck annunciator lights is at their normal level. Thanks for tuning in to part four of this tutorial on the overhead panel. Thank you.